Hey everyone, welcome to my blog channel. And in this video, I want to talk about the most recent cost of living adjustment that myself and many other people on Social Security, SSGI, and SSI um, received the pros and, of course, the cons of receiving such an increase. Let's get into it. I received, along with millions of other people, back in November, a letter from Social Security, which basically stated um, what the changes in the income were going to be. And in my situation, it was an increase for me, 41 to 914, beginning January of this year. Um, now, from what I understand, I believe SSGI, um, I think it was a little bit different amount. And if people are married, I believe it was a different amount as well. Um, so for the moment, I'm only speaking on what my increase is. Um, that's an extra $73. And um, I mean, when you think about it, it's like, yeah, great. Who doesn't want extra money, right? Um, but then you also have to stop and consider... The majority of people who re receive SSI or Social Security probably receive some type of food stamps. Um, odds are good many of them live in some type of subsidized disabled or senior housing. And of course, folks on Medicare, which I am not old enough to receive, so I can't speak anything about that from experience. I'm not on it. Um, but I've often heard over the years that when there is a cost of living increase, that the uh, premiums, I guess, for Medicare increase as well. So it seems to be this double-edged sword that you're given something supposedly to help you, but everybody has a handout to take it back off of you. So, what is really going on? Well, if you only receive SSI, say for example, and you're not living in subsidized housing, and you're not receiving food stamps, um, there's less opportunity for you to be quote-unquote penalized for receiving said money. Um, quite simply because you're not tied into other federal programs which in fact are income based. It's when you are tied into other programs as such that a substantial cost of living increase like this can be a really double-edged sword. A case in point would be subsidized housing. Subsidized housing is usually based on 30% of your income. Bad. But think for a moment. Okay, so your rent got adjusted. All right. But right, right before you received that money, notices were going out about food stamp benefits being cut because of the pending cost of living adjustment. For example, I knew right before Thanksgiving what this was. And this is from uh, DSS, Department of Social Services here in Horry County. And they sent you a little statement like that that basically says what you would be getting a decrease 
because of the cost of living adjustment and Social Security. So if you were not getting a lot of food stamps to begin with, that extra $73 could potentially cause you to receive no food stamps at all. And there are households where that just may wind up happening. Households where more than one person um, receives Social Security may wind up with a no food stamps at all because of that increased uh, money. So think for a moment, if your rent is going up, that's tapping into that extra money. And if your food stamps are eliminated because of that extra money, well, then there's other money you've got to come up with to compensate for that. And that can really put a lot of people, especially with the cost of food right now, in a really bad situation. Do I pay this bill or do I buy food? Do I go get my scripts? or do I buy food and it's not a good situation to be in. I never understood how the federal government it can give you that and then another federal program can essentially take it off of you. That never made an ounce of sense to me. It's almost like being an Indian giver. And I spent about three hours online one day trying to find out how legally that can be done. And I really couldn't find any specific answer. Pretty much my own conclusion was that since it's all based on income, that is how they are able to, to do it. <coughs> If it was based on other types of metrics, um, it probably um, would not would not affect so many people. But being that it's all income based, yes, HUD with rent, subsidized housing, Section Eight, etc. Now, oddly enough. When it comes to a subsidized housing, um, some states wanted HUD to basically put a cap on what the rent increases would be for people who were receiving this extra money. Um, and HUD in some states did not want to basically um, do anything in that regards um, because some families would have to deal with what's called an interim recertification um, something about their income increasing by two hundred dollars and that triggers something called an interim recertification rather than the yearly certification um, but HUD didn't, I guess, want to opt for charging people less. So in many states, um, yeah, that's probably already occurring. And like I said, I've never really understood how that is even legal. That one federal program can give you something and another federal program find a way to take it off of you. It, it just doesn't seem legal. But as I said, um, I've just come to a conclusion that because it's all income based, that's how legally they can do it. Which to me seems to be this great big circle jerk. And at the end of it all, what has a person really gotten out of that? They have less food stamps to buy food, 
they're paying more for their rent and what at the end of the day has this benefit helped them with gas or has this benefit helped them you know with food costs whatever or rent when it's being taken off of them in noticeable ways now as i said medicare is another one that has their grubby little handout too and unfortunately i can't speak on that because i don't receive medicare i am not in government you know subsidized housing but i mean i do know having been on section eight years ago about the 30 percent now so i mean i still scratch my head at that and i've always thought that that's just being like an indian giver now where it is going to be especially hard for people um many states had the emergency pandemic food stamps um going for the past year year and a half and when i applied for food stamps last year i was actually unaware because of the lack of information they give you in this letter unlike pennsylvania which sends you a few pieces of paper breaks everything down for you dss here doesn't tell you nothing um i was unaware that actually the stamps that i was getting were actually um part of them emergency food stamps so i got a really rude awakening when i had to recertify in october and i find out that I was actually getting stamps based on that emergency thing so i was scratching my head thinking okay so what would my real amount have been without those extra stamps and come to find out it was a lot less um and then what i actually had gotten back in pennsylvania now with the pandemic stamps ending as of february 1st and the decrease in stamps because of that cost of living increase um i won't even be getting say roughly more than 50 dollars a month and the irony is when i originally applied for food stamps um, when Ronnie was in Pennsylvania, I was only eligible for $50 a month, which made no sense to me whatsoever. Then my stamps increased and no explanation given. I had no idea that they were tied in with those emergency um, pandemic stamps. So, yeah with them ending in many states and south carolina is one um there's a lot of people that are really going to be in a bind and i laugh you know some people are like oh well you just have to be more frugal and this and that um yeah sure yeah you can be frugal in certain ways yes you can but the best penny pincher in the world um isn't going to be able to perform miracles either when you have a dozen eggs that cost you over five dollars and yes several days ago i actually bought eggs and i almost had a heart attack in walmart when i seen they physically were over five dollars i'm like what like oh my god so I'm, you know, scratching my head thinking, okay, so you're taking this money from many people, whether it's through Medicare, um, whether it's through raising their rent, etc., and then you're decreasing their food stamps because of that increase in their income, which 
they're not going to have as much of because the rent's getting raised. And it's like, but you're putting them more in a hole than you are helping them. And it, I, I just don't understand the the concept i guess of all this like like what is what is the purpose of giving someone that and then finding another way to take it off of them and i just want to share a little fun fact with you guys one day out of curiosity i said to google can you voluntarily refuse medicare I just asked Google that with the microphone. Can you voluntarily refuse Medicare? I was just curious. I mean, I know if you have a um, employer health plan or that, obviously, yes, you can still keep that. But I wondered, say, for example, you bought yourself a plan that you could afford and you feel that it's better than Medicare. You know, could you refuse Medicare? And I was astounded to find out that if you refuse Medicare, you're giving up your Social Security. And I thought, well, wait a minute, wait a minute here. How is that right? Because you work and pay into Social Security. So why should your Social Security all of a sudden... Um, be tied in with can a person on social security refuse a medicare according to helpline declining your medicare part a and part b benefits completely is possible but you are required to withdraw from all of your monthly benefits to do so here we go can i collect social security and decline medicare you can't opt out a Medicare Part A and continue to receive Social Security retirement benefit. If you're already receiving Social Security retirement benefits, you'll have to pay back all the benefits you received in order to opt out of Medicare Part A coverage. And I thought, okay, well, why? Why? Like, this makes absolute no sense. You are not allowed to have any part of Medicare while on an Obamacare plan. If you decline Part A coverage, you could lose your Social Security benefits. This includes retirement benefits or benefits from SSDI. Not only will you lose the future income from Social Security, you'll have to pay back any Social Security benefits you received up to the time you declined Part A. A ruling by U.S. District Court in 2001 addressed this very issue. Three federal employees sued the government because they wanted to discontinue Part A in favor of coverage under the Federal Employees Health Benefit Program. At the same time, they wanted to keep their Social Security benefits. The 1965 law that created both Social Security and Medicare provided the answer. Requiring a mechanism for plaintiffs and others in their situation to disenroll would be contrary to congressional intent, which was to provide mandatory benefits under Medicare Part A for those receiving Social Security retirement benefits. And that is why you can't decline Medicare. And to a point, I think that's rather, you know, unfair. But, uh, Like, I, I didn't understand that. So when I read that, I was like, wait, what? What? Like, yeah, it's, um, uh, 
yeah, the government just linked the two together, and so you're stuck with Medicare Part A. And it's the other things that um, B and D, I guess, that you can decide, you know, if you do or don't want, something about Medicare Advantage and all that happy nonsense, which, thank God, I don't got to deal with for a few more years, thank goodness. Um, because I don't understand it now, so I don't know if I'm going to understand it in a few years' time. But the whole point of this video is to say that it seems in a way to be a double-edged sword when it comes to cost of living increases for a majority of folks on Social Security, SSDI, SSI because someone giveth it to you and then another hand is out there to taketh from you and so what have you really gained by it how has your life improved with getting it and I just find it so so ironic that this has been going on for years and it doesn't seem like it's really ever going to stop I mean Okay, I understand, like, with the government subsidized, you know, rent, if your income crease increases, your rent goes up. But, if you're on Social Security, is, you know, should your rent increase as much as compared to someone, say, who wasn't working but now is working 30 hours a week? And there's a big difference in what they are earning versus what someone on a fixed income is earning and yet you know they both would get a, um, a rent increase and depending on how much of an increase it could be a somewhat substantial after factoring in maybe their medicare you know went up and maybe now they're not going to be getting any food stamps really put that person into um, a very bad situation versus the person who is working and whose rent increased because they got a bear job or they're working more hours and I don't I don't necessarily see um, I don't want to say fairness but I don't understand, as I said, how one federal program can take from you something that another government program gave you. I'm, you know, scratching my head on that one. And so my thoughts about the cost of living increase is I'm in a better situation than most people. I'm not dealing with Medicare. Um, I, I don't have to deal with that headache for the moment. And I'm not on a government subsidized housing or Section 8. So I don't have to worry about a rent increase. The only thing I have concerning for me is the minuscule amount of stamps I've I will be getting and with the prices going up what am I going to be paying out of pocket now um, when I do go shopping so I'm in a better position than many of you guys will be after all this is said and done and um, the dust settles from it but I mean it's um it's really a double-edged sword. It, it really, truly, it is. I mean, I could understand the intent and everything behind it, but if you're not actually physically going to be keeping that money in your pocket, is it almost even worth it to actually give it to people when other things are going to take that very increase on you so that what you're left with isn't really much of an increase at all let me know in the comment section guys your thoughts on it and 
what, if anything, you're going through because of having received that cost of living adjustment. If you like this video, guys, please give it a big thumbs.